The Airbus A380. It's the largest passenger aircraft in the world. 24 meters high. Weighing in at over 500 tons and room for more than 500 passengers. And that brings its own challenge. How to feed all these people at 40,000 feet. There are actually 30 people a day just working for what Singapore Airlines like. Get on board with airline caterers Gate Gourmet in Zurich, Switzerland. To discover what it takes to fill this aircraft's galleys. Zurich Airport, Switzerland. The world's largest passenger aircraft arrives. And master airline caterers Gate Gourmet have just one hour to refill her galleys. In charge of this flying feast, executive chef Oliver Fisher. There are actually 30 people a day just working for one Singapore Airlines flight. You can say 30 persons from cutting to cooking, from western to eastern, from cutting to uh, really going from scratch. About 30 people who are really constantly involved in this production of this A380. Of this Fully loaded, this aircraft carries over 400 people. You think it's easy to just bring a meal to serve a meal. But if you look at the entire supply chain behind to make it happen, there are that many people involved in this process and everything has to go 100% smooth that you have the meal in the cabin at a certain good quality is uh, a challenge. A challenge that this team face every day. And it begins more than 24 hours before the aircraft touches down. To add to the challenge, this isn't just any airline food. It's considered among the best in the skies. And it's not one meal fits all. On A380 Singapore Airlines, we have the whole economy class where we have to cook hot and cold and sweets for this class. And we have the business and the sweet class, so J class and sweet class. And then we have, of course, the technical crew, means captain, the, the co pilot, the, the whole crew. Every airline meal follows a precise production process. Preparation. Chilling. Portioning. Tray setting. And delivery. A job this team does hundreds of times a day. We are serving uh, up to 220 flights a day with food. 
uh, this makes a total of uh, 15 million meals we are delivering a year. This is uh, an impressive number of uh, food if you think of it's 50,000 meals a day on average. And every one is time critical. Without the catering, the aircraft is grounded. Passenger numbers for flight SQ345 Zurich to Singapore arrive at Catering HQ 24 hours in advance. And the cooking begins. As in any good restaurant, Chef Fisher likes to keep in touch with his departments. This is the main kitchen, hot kitchen. We are here where it all starts, so we have the recipe here. And then it will be prepared on that side. Recipes are delivered by the airline, and the cooking instructions are precise. Head of this in-flight cookbook, Herman Freidank. There is a business class quality, there is a first class quality, obviously. And of course there is also a, a economist class quality. Right? We have certain quality standards. We don't do frozen food. All vegetables are fresh. All the sauces are made from scratch. Everything has to be fresh and clear. This policy adds even more pressure to Chef Fisher's part. Here we are making sure that we're having authentic recipes. So we're having Asian recipe, authentic Asian recipes, we're having ethnic recipes, we're having tasty specialities, traditional. So we make sure that the stuff is doing exactly according to the recipe and then it goes to the kitchen where we are there, where they cook. Very important here is the person who's preparing is not cooking. So we're having sure that this person and this person are doing a double check. You know, that uh, the interpretation of the chefs still is different. So we make sure, let's say we have an authentic Singaporean recipe, that we have a 100% correct ethnic recipe with the spices, with the fat, with everything. Because we are not having always the same chefs, so we have to make sure that the chefs are doing that all straight to make sure every day, every flight, every class is according to the standards. These pork steaks are not just being cooked, they're being dressed. It's not like you do it at home, that you grill it and then it's ready to eat. You just keep a color. The aircraft ovens are heat only. So this process gives the food that fresh from the grill look. We just give them the taste, we give them the shine. Each ingredient gets the same treatment. We have quite the same situation. It's the vegetable section, Western dish. You see, he's following all the recipes are clearly done. Each quantity, each seasoning, oil, pepper, everything is, is perfectly weighted. Here. It's not normal in a hotel kitchen, but here we do. Now you see here, this is a nice color, actually it's salted. That means that it, it needs to be a little bit gold brown. It couldn't be only green like a vegetable that you cook in the water. You would think cooking on mass makes the chef's job easier, but it has its pitfalls. 
he cooks maybe 15 kilo of these courgettes. And if we make a tasting and it's not good, we, we throw away maybe 15 kilo. And if you have small quantity, you don't have that much waste. These chefs take as much pride in their work as in any five-star hotel kitchen. I would only serve very fresh, high-quality foods because I believe that the food is the most important thing. It is not, of course, for a lot of people, it is to go from A to B punctual. But to make the difference in that good service, it's definitely the service concept, the wine and dine experience, especially on long-haul flights. But in this industry, it's an attention to detail that can often be unappreciated. We know airline food has a lot of uh, negative comments, but has also a lot of positive. And it's really to keep the balance, to understand why it's negative, to understand what happens, and definitely to make a change. We have to make a lot of effort because we do not have this direct line to the passenger to, to really go very clear in our message in good products, very clear food, not too complicated, not too vanished, has to be clear on the point. I think for the passenger, it, if he sees how the food is coming to the airplane, he will be very, very impressed and will say, wow, because maybe they don't see what's behind. This is fresh produced now for an economy class passenger. The kitchen for Singapore Airlines is split into food types. Western, Asian, and special meals. Each with its own team of chefs and recipe book. So, das ist einfach von uh, Singapore First Class. Gemüse, Gemüse. Das ist Tofu. Kalotten, Bohne und dann Kapi. certainly not your average airline grub. There are over 50 menu choices on this A380 flight. If you look at, the, at an A380, we start at the moment here in Zurich with a main course that you can choose from, Asian and Western, meat or fish or vegetarian. Then you have a second service where you have the breakfast, a huge variety of hot and cold breakfast. You see as well, if you have this tray, where you have the, a salad, a fruit salad, you have a pastry item, and you have the choice of hot meal in economy, all freshly cooked. And then in the business, of course, you have this small saute service or uh, the first class service, even caviar on board on, in sweet class. On a full flight, that equates to more than 1,500 meals. And this kitchen has just five hours to cook them all. of bringing the best food to the skies begins long before these recipes hit the stove. 
It starts with the shopping list, and that takes an entire department. In an average week, this airline kitchen works its way through mountains of produce. One of the biggest headaches is storing it. Deliveries stream into this warehouse all day long. As soon as they arrive, goods are transferred from their boxes to storage containers. Each one gets a unique barcode. A short conveyor ride later, and it enters the Aladdin's Cave of Goodies. This warehouse spans a massive 54,000 cubic meters. And when something's needed, a quick barcode entry brings it to the kitchen door. The only exception is the fresh food. That heads straight to the kitchen. Two hours into the day, and the chefs are still busy with production. The in-flight menus start life at Singapore HQ. We believe in order to ensure our quality standards, uh, everything has to come from a centralized office food and beverage concerns is actually prepared and planned in Singapore. But every dish is translated to suit internationally available produce. So we have to create it here with our ingredients here. That's the challenge here. The recipes don't just use local ingredients. They also cater for local tastes. Singapore is a, in, a, in a very unique position, of course, because in Singapore we have uh, four main culinary specialities, if you will. Uh, there's, of course, the, the majority of the community is Chinese. And within the Chinese, because they're all migrants, they have the different types of Chinese, like Sichuan, Hainanese, and, and, and Cantonese. Uh, we also have a large community of uh, Malaysian dishes and then of course there's a, an Indian community. So we have actually then on top of that the Western uh, stuff. And just when the chefs master the dish, it all changes. Sectors like Zurich for instance, uh, we change the menus every two months. Uh, we have other sectors which are much more frequent, uh, we uh, change monthly. In Zurich, all new recipes start here. We are actually in the test kitchen here. Many development is creating here. We have uh, actually planning here the new cycles. The, we are designing the menu concepts for our customers. We are creating new recipes. We are evaluating new um, production techniques. So that's actually like a test lab where we all preparing things before it goes to the big kitchens. And the timescales are brutal. 
it takes about from one month to three months development time. And this is very short. If you look at uh, retail or if you look at big food companies, they have ages for that. And we are always under pressure because we have to develop that in a short period. So at the moment we are planning for autumn and winter. The process is normally that we get an order, a, a recipe or may, let's say a request from our customer where we are actually planning to create a new seasonal cycle, let's say it. We try to create it in a matter that it can fly, we call it. To ensure the food can fly, the test kitchen replicates the conditions on board the aircraft. Most important or state of the art, of course, in a development kitchen of airline is we having this airline oven. And this, I think, it's the most crucial thing. So we have the same oven like we have on the plane. We can actually simulate the same products what we have in the plane. Now, what we don't have here is the pressure. We know that the pressure is also an indicator in the, in the air. Pressure changes the taste of the food. In an aeroplane, the air is very dry when you fly because of the pressurized cabin that uh, dries up your mucus and uh, your taste buds uh, lose a little bit of taste. So it means it needs a certain content of creamy, let's say, of spiciness, because in the air, if you reheat something, the salt goes less, so you have to put a lot of power in. And that restricts the choice of ingredients. Reheated food by itself tastes different, uh, or, uh, different. so you have to prepare the food in a, in a way that it, is, um, that it is reheatable, yet it has to be hygienic, right? So you cannot leave it raw. So there is a, there's a fine balance between, you know, what you must do and what you would like to do. <laughs> there are certain types of food which don't lend themselves for reheating. Uh, a very fine fish, for instance, actually is not that good on an airline. Uh, you need fattier fish sometimes with structure rather than a sole, for instance. Right? And to add yet another layer to these restrictions, every ingredient has to smell good. Yes, we are in Switzerland here. And we love to have our fondues and raclette cheese no go in the airline in the in a plane because if someone has this strong cheese taste you can't serve it in the plane. And then there's there's a cabbage for example. If we're using cabbage we have to make sure it's a blanched, a light cabbage, let's say a Savoy cabbage or a cauliflower. We have some products they are not suitable in a plane. So cheese is I think the best example. It's the chef's job to put all this theory into practice. A little over 24 hours to departure. To keep the schedule, the team has one hour to finish cooking. to get dessert on the table. We are producing about 10,000 of these pieces a day. These are the economy class pastries. We have one oven, two chefs here, pastry chefs. We're using here quite an extensive amount of almonds and flour. It's about 10 tons of flour we need, about 2.5 uh, tons of almonds um, a month just to produce these uh, cakes. Almost every item served on board is handmade. The only thing what we do not do is the pralines. The pralines are we are not doing. The rest we are all doing ourselves. Ice cream, we do uh, some baking things, we do the creams fresh, we do all the cutting because that's really difficult. Um, and we do as well all the hot 
uh, cooked mousses and all these things. So actually we do prep the whole range. Finally, the meals are cooked. But the job isn't over. Next step, chilling. You see here now, it's already the Singapore food from the Chinese chef on the bottom. On top we have breakfast, Singapore. This he will be now doing in the chiller, last chiller. We have four hours time to reach under 10 degrees. If we do not reach four hours, if we have take five hours or four hours and ten minutes, they have to cook it again. We're not allowed to use it anymore. It's a matter of food safety. Because the bacteria is going between 30 to 60 degrees, it's the most dangerous zone. So we have to make sure we chill it up rapidly. And that's a typical cook and chill, we call it cook and chill, what all airline kitchens has to do, and especially a crucial thing to make sure that the food is really safe. While the kitchens scramble to keep the food cold, another department is feeling the heat. It's time for the washing up. carries almost 100 trolleys containing over 10,000 individual components and what goes on must come down that means every single item from cups to cartons is sorted for clean up or clean out Beispiel Singapur anschauen, dann versorgen wir das alles wieder so schnell wie möglich in die Trolleys und können dadurch zählen und sehen, was uns fehlt. One of the biggest cleanup headaches, the cutlery. Wir haben pro Tag in etwa 70.000 Stück Besteck und zwei Tonnen mehr oder weniger in der, im Monat. And coping with that load takes a special machine. Instead of soap and water, this cutlery cleaner uses minerals to clean and polish every piece. into the food chain. the aircraft will depart Singapore en route to Zurich. That's the trigger for the portioning team. For 
for the airlines and also for us it's very important to have that all the people have the same size, so we have 20 gram of each or 30 gram of each. With such close proximity to each other, it's important for every passenger to have the same quantity. You don't want to glance over to find your neighbor's steak is twice the size of yours. Aircraft are also limited by the amount of weight they can carry, so every gram counts. And when it comes to the budget, those extra spoonfuls add up. Getting it right is a job for Roland Manser. We are here in the Anrichterküche. Sie sehen hier überall die verschiedenen Mahlzeiten, die portioniert werden, Sandwiche gemacht für alle Fluggesellschaften, die wir beliefern dürfen. That means taking those bulk ingredients and breaking them down into individual meals. Here, very important is kitchen was one kilo of carrot, one kilo of meat. Here we are really portioning it to exactly the configuration, the class, and also uh, the airline. So here we are, for example, doing the whole economy class of uh, Singapore Airlines. It starts with a master meal. The golden sample, we call it the supervisor or the, the person who's in charge, they prepare one meal, weigh it, make sure it's exactly according to the specification. And then staff is looking at it, has the information. We have 28 of that, that's the booking. So they do then these 28 bookings. That's actually a system where all kitchens following it to make sure we have the right specification, the right menu for the right plane. And it's not a simple one size fits all. Every cabin has a different packaging. Well, here we're having a typical business and first class. It's in foil, crew plating them on board. Once on board, economy class meals are heated and served in their containers. But for business and first class, there's a further step for the cabin crew. This is the way the dish gets loaded inside our aircraft. As you can see, the sauce has to be always separate and all the ingredients are separate from each other. It's yet another step in the quality control process. The traditional way is that the dish is normally all together. The problem with that is the sauce runs into the vegetables, it gets heated together, it gets mushing and so on. And here all the components are different, so you preserve their, their, their freshness. The crew heats the container, then transfers the meal to a plate. They will get a what we call a plating guide. They will follow the plating guide under normal circumstances. They have their own lead way, they can do what they like because they have learned how to put a dish together generally. Back in the kitchen. To add to the challenge of portioning 1,500 meals. This team must keep an eye on the thermometer. Also, hier sehen wir die verschiedenen Arbeitsstationen. In jeder Station hat es auch ein Temperaturkontrollblatt. Die Temperatur vom ganzen Batch muss erfasst werden. Es darf nie wärmer als 15 Grad sein. Und die Richtlinie ist auch nie länger als 45 Minuten hier in der Produktion sein. Da muss der Batch abgeschlossen sein. Not everything is portioned here. Some meals get the special treatment. Here we have the special meal section. And here you can see all the variety we have to do and on a daily basis how much it can be. So we have here, for example, a low calorie meal. So if the passenger has a normal, a normal uh, nice dish from here, the, uh, a business class dish, 
at the moment we have a terrine so this is the light option because it's poached fish so it has a protein light low calorie and the salads are nicely tossed but uh, fat reduced so it can be a medical meal but it can be also uh, an asian chinese dish with a, with a sushi a vegetarian sushi dish and so we have all the, the different varieties it can be that the customer or the airline says i want to have a specific one or we are allowed to use it and here you see may i quickly here you see all the codes we have where we have to look after so a chinese vegetarian a hindu meal a muslim meal so that's the ethnic one then we have the gluten-free non-lactose the high risk so we have specially trained people here to do according to the specification some special meals are harder to produce than others the harder special meal i think it's always ethnic meals indian vegetarian uh, and as well because there are specific needs chain meals where you have a mix between indian food and non root vegetables so because that's a, a, a religious thing so it can be a combination of religious and ethnic food so actually that's the most complex one because that's also there where you need a lot of understanding of culture and as we all know at home sometimes everyone thinks they know how you like to eat and then it's very different especially north and south uh, india for example china the same north and but also in europe i mean italian is not a german so it's very difficult to get this ethnic cultural needs And there are two very special meals. It isn't just the passengers that dine on board. The crew also has a menu, but their choices are restricted. The, the captain and the co-pilot having two different meals just for safety reason. That's the same like if you have a, a government traveling, so you make sure you have two planes so that you have not lose all the safety issue. We have the same with the captain and co-pilots that they have different foods. So it's always to make sure that nothing happens on board. The cabin itself, uh, they have the choice from different meals as well. So they, you don't have just one single uh, meal for, for the entire cabin. So there is also protection on this side. Uh, not even uh, shellfish is allowed uh, in the cockpit. So you have also protection on, on on this side that food is safe. And like the rest of us, they have to give notice. No, the captain can't change his mind half an hour before. But there are some passengers who can change their minds right up to departure. Oliver Hormuth and Ochte Urs are responsible for private flights. They're prepared for anything. Once is a, a guest wanted a special uh, type of red wine, which we uh, and we uh, we ordered it, and a taxi went to the city, which is like 20 kilometers from here approximately, to get it. The price is not really the issue with the with the private flights. It's really uh, um, be willing to to uh, go that extra mile and be willing also to. Uh, to do everything to satisfy the, the, the guests. Today, red wine is not the challenge. A special diet is. Oliver has a flight of marathon runners coming in. So, Bruno, Grüezi. We have a little Bestellung for morgen. Also, ein Flug. Wichtig ist, es ist ein Spätflug. Das sind zehn Marathonläufer. Das heißt, die gesamte Bestellung müsste wirklich bei der Zubereitung auf Fetthaltiges so weit wie möglich verzichtet werden. The kitchen also scrambles for these last minute requests. It's actually exactly the same like in a à la carte restaurant. So we have really to be quickly get the order from the plane, most of the time direct from the plane. And then we get, have an order, let's say two salads, uh, two hot dishes, a lobster, or just a nice sandwich. And so we have to do that immediately 
we got the order by phone, so it's actually the same, like a room service situation in a hotel. So they can order what they want, and then we try our best. In the main production unit, catering for the A380 reaches the next department. Tray setting. And like every department, this team follows a master template. We have that from the build gemacht. It is a Mitarbeiter, who alles wird vorbereiten. Alles, wer wieder in Bild ist, bringt er einfach so schön an. Die Mitarbeiter sind da. Sie schauen hier. Sie schauen das Foto, was sie brauchen. Sie nehmen es. Sie arbeiten auf dem Tisch. Once each trolley is full, it's straight back into cold storage. Some trolleys get the first class treatment. Special appetizer for our first class passengers. We have the hot meal garnish, different herbs for the hot meal for garnish. Full milk, skim milk, and coffee cream. And those little extras. Not everything in these trolleys is edible. There's one rack for the hot towels. This team has cooked, chilled, portioned, and set the trays. They now have to hope there are no last minute changes. Flight SQ346 from Singapore lands in less than an hour. There's no changing the menu now. Trucks are ready to roll. But before they can reach the aircraft, there's a security stop. Ich muss ein bisschen schmunzeln, wenn ich an die alten Zeiten von 14 Jahren zurückdenke. Da war alles viel, viel, viel einfacher. Viele Dinge, wo wir uns in der Zwischenzeit daran gewöhnt haben, sind selbstverständlich. Es ist aufwendiger. Es ist aber auch berechtigt, dass es mehr Kontrollen gibt. Auch vier Augenkontrollen. Und ich denke, heute gehört das dazu und keiner stört sich eigentlich groß daran. Finally, the last mile. The Singapore Airlines A380 is on the ground. It 
it's time to take the brakes off. First job. Making some space. Those old trolleys have to go. to departure. Actually, it is really a, a tough time scale. It has to be done in one hour. is coming in and exactly 10.30 we have to be finished with all the work inside. That means we also the changing the trolleys and uh, all the uplifts, what they want to like uh, some soft drinks or whatever, that has to be done 10.30. So we dock on 8.30, 9.30, 10 o'clock, we are finished already. The trigger for the timing is the departure time. And then we have to calculate back by when the plane has to be loaded and hand over. I mean, the problem is the figures. When we have the figures early enough, that's easier for us to prepare everything and to be on the right time here on the aircraft. Just when they thought the job was done, a last minute change comes in. One of the first class passengers has a special request. Ah, actually we wait just for uh, some strawberries. It's just one, one and a half hour ago he made, he made the order and they're on the way now. The food is loaded. The passengers are boarding. But the strawberries are nowhere to be seen. Just minutes to departure and the special order arrives via the VIP stairs. Okay, I mean, if the order is coming to us, we deliver, you know, that's our business, so. Thanks to the expertise of these master caterers, SQ-345 departs on time. All that's left now... ...is for the passengers to enjoy their meal.